Hi everyone. I'm a little bit late to this. Uh, I was doing a video and it didn't exactly work out, so I'm try this again. I'm doing a tutorial on my bubble tea coffee abstract painting, and uh, I started off with this one and I already got it together. I got this idea from uh, Marimi's Small Art. She's She has a, a, a lot of videos, very good quality videos, not uh, not like mine. <laughs> but anyway, what, what I did here was I used tea bags, okay? These are tea bags that I, I took a tea bag and I opened it, I took the tea out. Um, I kept the tea here somewhere. Yeah, in, in, in Marimi's uh, video, she used the tea with a little bit of uh, homemade texture paste to give it texture, but I, I chose not to do that. And, but I took the tea bags and I tore them up and I, I put like half of one here and then tore this one put here. This is a dryer sheet that I soaked in coffee. And the dryer sheet really makes a good texture, kind of a webby, hairy texture, and it's easy to tear up into pieces. And I glued that down here. I used um, heavy gel matte medium to glue this down because that's all I had at the time. Um, you could use you could use Mod Podge. Um, I would rec recommend the matte, something that is matte, won't give you too much trouble painting over it. Then I glued down the the little tea bag. I don't know strings labels, and one one label that this is the paper that actually wraps around the tea bag. And I glued that down there. I glued this here, going up. And then once I had my little pieces glued down, I went with this which is absorbent ground. Um, if you were doing this on paper, you probably don't need this, but what this does is, is makes the canvas absorb the paint and it gives you that watercolor look. If you're doing acrylics, uh, liquid acrylics, or thinning down your acrylics, this is really good to use because it absorbs, sucks it in, and it just it spreads like watercolor. It's very pretty. And all I did is, is um, it's like a thick gesso. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a thick gesso. And you just paint it on. And I painted it around the pieces that I had glued down where the canvas showed. Now, before I did any of this, I did gesso this canvas. Um, if you want your canvas to absorb paint a little bit better, gesso it before you paint. Even if it comes pre-gessoed already, it's a different kind of gesso. And this one, I'm gonna throw a lot of uh, liquid paint on it, which is, I'm using, today I'm using watercolors. So I want it to absorb, I want it like a sponge and, and to spread and sop it up. So this is gonna take a while to dry. So what I did, a little one. I did a little one and already, I started already with uh, my watercolors and I started with yellow ochre and some yellow ochre and just make it really watery and I just kind of like just rubbed it all over like this and because this is a light color I just went right over the labels and kind of brought them back towards the background now let me make sure this is in there really good yeah all right <clears throat> Maybe I should get a little bit wider. There we go. This is a little bit of canvas. I want you guys to see it really well. And I'm sorry it's, it started late and you missed those first steps, but it's, it's really not much to it. Uh, this is a very easy project. You let the paint do what it wants to do and you go with it. All right, I did my yellow ochre. And then what I'm going to do is this is my coffee. Okay. 
this was about, or well, originally was like a big teaspoon full with about a half an ounce of boiling water to um, just instant coffee. Just instant coffee. If you want to boil a pot of coffee, it might be a little bit more difficult because you need very little, but you need it thick, like ink. I mean, you want it thick enough. You, you don't want to drink this coffee. So what I do here is make sure my brush is wet and get a good fat absorbent brush that's going to give you a lot of, uh, a lot of, it's going to hold a lot of water. And what I do is dip it in here and just put it right there on the top and let it drip. And I'm gonna just put this right here on the top and let it drip. Now because the first layer is already, is still wet, it's gonna drip everywhere. But you can, you can make your lines drip in a certain way. If first you put your paint on the top and then you wet a trail. Now every time I put my paint on the top, it's going to follow that trail. But up here I have one of those strings from the coffee label attached. So it's, it's causing the paint to run this way, which is pretty cool too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm just going to let it run in this direction. Okay, like that. Now, before you get it too soap and wet, this needs to dry a little bit. So I'm going to blow dry it real quick. Hope. I'm just going to dry it in one direction. Now, if you find that it's getting too dark too soon, you can lift it up. Now, this is a dry paper towel it picked up some. You can put a wet paper towel or just add clear water on it. And dip some more in there. Look how much that lightened up. I'm going to try this. Now it doesn't have to be completely dry. Just as long as it's not dripping wet. Okay. So this is good enough for right now. And I'm going to make some more. I'm just going to turn it. And I'm going to make some more drippy stuff drippy lines. And see now now you're really getting in there and seeing some action. Now look how that absorbs right here. It's so cool. And I just put it on the same little spot up here and it's gonna follow it's gonna follow the drip in the same spot. Now I have a glass table and it's really easy to clean, but if you, this is messy. The coffee is sticky. And if you're worried about what the back of the canvas is going to look like, it's going to be a mess too. So you, you, you know, if you're too worried about that, you might want to tape it up. And that's really a good line right there. Now I'm not going to tilt it that line anymore because I like that line to stay the way it is. So I'm going to leave it down and I'm going to dry that spot. I just blow, blow dried it enough so it's not dripping. Now I want some more lines going this way, lines going that way. So I'm going to do this and this is going to go here. Right 
there. Right here. And you just keep putting it in the same spot that you did before. And it should follow the line of where it's dripping. Stains are coming out pretty cool on this one. It's going to be a little bitty one. It's a little bit. It's kind of a challenge. But I don't want this video to go for two hours long. Now because the top, it was messing with this right here, I'm going to make some lines going from the bottom up. Now I already decided that this was going to be the top because that's how I put my labels. Normally with abstracts like this, I don't decide what the top is until I get a little bit further in the design. I'm making some more lines. Lines. Now see how a grid is starting to form. And right here, it just it doesn't seem to want to stay. Now I'm thinking uh, with with real watercolors, it might not be so difficult to keep, let it stay. But this is very thick coffee, and it's, I'm having trouble making it stay. And then you can move it around. The blow dryer will also make the line stay. I think it's starting to get a little bit too dark, so I'm going to take my white, this is my white watercolor, with some of this yellow, the yellow ochre. And make a separate mix of that. I do mostly white with a little bit little dot of yellow and maybe a little dot of coffee and that's going to give me like a beige look and let me see I'm going to go this way and I'm going to make some highlight lines and if I wet it, it will follow that drip. Now this, this brush is a lot smaller, but you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's following the drip. And then we're going to do one here.
this would be a good project to do with kids because it's messy and it's just letting stuff run wherever it wants to go and it creates a pattern for you that dryer sheet is really doing some cool effects right there kind of spread it out so I'm going to put a line here I'm almost creating like a basket weave effect. And I just did this by accident. I, mean, I was playing around with it, moving it, and saw that the, it was moving in different ways, and I liked it, so I kept it going. notice here but the coffee dries shiny it still looks wet but it's, it's, it's pretty much dry it's just dry shiny and kind of sticky like sugary don't know why but that's got a good little pattern going there and it's time to draw my circles but first I gotta get my water Okay, for circles drawing, I have cups. Now this one is too big for this. So I'm just going to use these two. It's just the little one. Now I really like this center section, but if you're going to use a big cup, I mean a big circle, it's better to go a little bit off center. You don't want your... I don't know, I always, I always thought your, your center point really shouldn't be smack dab in the center. <laughs> and although this abstracts don't have any rules, I have my own personal rules and it keeps my composition looking decent. Um, center point is your biggest piece, your show piece, which is going to be my biggest bubble, it needs to be off center either towards the top or towards the bottom. I would do this, the, the big one, more towards the bottom because it's a heavier size, it's a bigger size. Now I'm gonna use a watercolor pencil to draw my circle. Okay. And this is not gonna be easy because I'm not gonna be able to see most of it. I can I can see my my circle right here all right and then I have this one which I'm going to put kind of right here overlapping this one a little bit and I'm not gonna go on top of it I'm just gonna stop right there And your circles don't have to be perfectly round, OK? 
okay, because they're bubbles. And evil bubbles aren't always perfectly round. So I got two. I like to use odd numbers, so I'm going to use one more up here, a little one. And this time I'm going to use the bottom of the cup, which makes a smaller circle. And this circle is not going to be attached to that. But I'm going to put it underneath where the spread is. So I use this rule that I use for floral arranging. Go small to the top, big and heavy, uh, and main point towards the bottom. And you have more of a, it's, it's a weight issue. It's, it looks more like it's balanced. It gives you balance. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Now, th this is the part where I use the set green. This is to give it a slant, a little bit of color. I thought the green worked well with this. What I used was, um, I used sap green, and I added a little bit of burnt umber just to give it a muddy green color. And what I did with this, paint it the top of the circle with it in like in a half moon way and you're not really painting it's more like staining and just letting it just blend in there and letting the background show through and it's going to give you another dimension and just the top part like this okay and you can like just feather it out towards the center a little bit, maybe. A little circle. And this is just a very simple way to make a bubble. I do them one way only. It works for me. Shadow on the inside of the circle on the top. Shadow on the inside, like right here. Just on the top. Okay, with um, while the paint's still wet, the fluid acrylics or watercolors, you can still mop it up a little bit, and then go back over it and use my my shadow on the inside of the circle on the top part. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one on the inside, on the top. My green. And just kind of blend it down a little bit. But most of the color. And you want the middle to be slightly, just slightly lighter. And what you could do with, with watercolors is actually wet your brush and rub and it will take some of the paint off. There. And then on this one. And this one's gonna be a little more difficult because it's got that paper in there. But just giving the, the inside, the right smack in the middle part a little bit of light. Now, the next shadow is underneath the drop or a bubble. It is going to be dark, but this is on the outside. Right underneath on the outside. And that is the shadow of the bubble. And where there are two meet right here, you want this part really dark. So Darkening it some more. Now with watercolors, you could always dry your brush really good and pick up paint 
with your brush like that just soaks it right up and then you can blend some more and I just lightened it too much but I just wanted to show you how that is you want it to dry darker let it pool it's like a little pool of, of water there and I'm going to put a little bit of shadow just on the outside of this where the big bubble is over the top of the other bubble, bubble right there so we're going to put some shadow right here and then this one needs shadow at the bottom And I went a little bit too much to that side. There we go. All right. Now, blow dry again. This is still pretty much the ugly stage. Here's where you take, if you're going to use a pen, make sure it's completely dry, but uh, I'm just going to use a brush. A detail brush, this is a, a, a zero, round, not very long, and this is some black watercolor, and I'm going to make it thick. that's my watercolor. I'm going to spray some water on here. And I'm going to swirl this around. Just make it really inky. You probably use real ink too. But this is what I have. And I found it's, it's, it actually works very well. I like doing the detail in this better than the acrylic paint because the acrylic paint you have to put a lot of water to thin it out and it's not as dark okay I think that's cool enough so you just dip your brush and kind of like rub off the excess and let's see where can I start oh well I'm going to trace my circles And this part is, I wish I could speed up the video, but I don't know how yet. I just started this, my need to teach. I like to share what I've learned, what so really works well for me. Try to simplify things too. Now you see how that's really a little bit too puddly. So I'm going to take a brush, a dry brush, and just touch it, and it soaks up the excess paint. And right here, well, it's still wet now. But if it's dried, you can reactivate it by rubbing it. Okay. Now you can make the bottom a little thicker anyway. Because that's where your, your shadow is, right here at the bottom. This one, because it's so dark here at the bottom, I'm going to put a lot of black. And 
and then I'm going to brown this part off right here. This is part of the shadow of the big one on top of the smaller one. got a big chunk right here but what I could do is actually just follow this line that's where the dryer sheet is right there so it looks like the circle is right behind it which is cool really dark here. Now that came out a little bit too dark so I'm going to pick it up with a dry brush. I'm going to mix it in there. Now for real watercolor painting, don't stick your fingers in there. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> this is a mixed medium, it really doesn't matter. But you have to be uh, watercolors. You got to be very clean. Keep your fingers off the paper. You don't want to mix the oils of your hand. No matter how clean they are, you're going to have oils in your hand. It will cause a resist on your watercolor paper, and it could ruin the whole thing. But this is. This is supposed to look junky. To soften up these edges here. Alright, got my bubbles very well defined. I'm going to use um, acrylic white. An acrylic white. Where did I put it? I just had it. Here it is acrylic white paint. I'm just going to put this right here a little bit. And you only need like a little smidge. And I'm going to use a little round brush because it's little. The straight white brown, a uh, white, and I'm going to do the reflections. And the reflections are going to go on the top here. Like that. Here on the bottom. Put more on the bottom, that's where the light is hitting. And what I do also is dip my the tip of my brush and make some bubbles some little dots up there and some little dots down here and even maybe something in the middle and there you have your bubble and that's all you got to do with your bubble now on the other one I did I outlined the white spots because they were not showing up as well this one, I think the white, the reflections are really showing up good. I don't need to outline them, but we'll see. When the paint dries, it starts to be more translucent. And then I'm going to put, these are smaller, so I'm not going to put as many dots, the little dots of light, there. and that's my bubbles, bubble bubble. Now all I got left is some more outlining. Now at this point what I do is just outline the grids. Line. 
line the lines that I make, made with the dripping and what I did on my other painting I made um, some doodles This one's little, but I'm going to try to do a doodle. Let's see, where can I do a doodle? How about right here? Um, we're going to do, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a dot. Okay, a dot. And then I'm going to take a brush and just make a straight line coming down. Do another dot. Do it with the tip of the brush or the back of the brush. There we go. And then make a little line coming down. Now, if you like doing uh, Zen tangles and zip tangles. You can do a lot more. It's just difficult with paint. It gets a little difficult. See, that's that's getting out of uh, the shape on that. Just don't look right. So I'm gonna pick it up. Okay. Unfortunately, the color underneath comes out too. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put a little bit of coffee right here. There we go, some coffee. I'm gonna let that dry before. Uh, see how it's picking up the, the black right there? So I'm gonna go back to that later and right now what I'm gonna do is just quit keep um, make my lines and here's this is my label right here I could uh, draw around the label a little bit just to show it off and then I have the, the little T label right here too this one and this is the string now you can paint over the string and accentuate that line. You could also do it in white. And this is pretty much it. I mean from here on it's just following uh, the stains, <laughs> the pattern that the stains made. And letting the paint itself tell you what to do. I just found this a very organic, earthy kind of painting. And that's why I decided to go with the moss green color. <clears throat> it just gave it more of a, of a natural occurrence looking. Kind of woodsy type. This picture really surprised me. My, my original painting, it surprised me a lot. It got to a stage where I didn't know what to do with it. It was just looking awful. So what I started doing, just outlining. When, whenever I make an abstract that has a lot of uh, a lot of stains and the paint, and I just start outlining them. Outlining them black or white. And, and finding um, a pattern within that. Yeah, that is, uh, that kind of disintegrated on its own. But let me try here if I could. The one I did really came out cute. And just painting was a lot drier. Why? Okay, you can make a little more wiggle line. Here we go. Just a dot. there and I think I made some mushrooms too and whatever so that's all there is to it I hope you enjoyed it and um, 
is no big secret. And thank you for watching.